Welcome, everyone. So glad you're able to join us for HDL's uh, California latest California sales tax trends and forecast webinar. Before we get started, just want to let everyone know this presentation is being recorded and will be available along with the slide deck on HDL websites, hdlcompanies.com. Sorry for the shameless plug, but it'll be available very soon. Uh, all registered participants, here's the great caveat, all registered participants will receive an email notification when it's posted on our website. So be watching your email. Um, here we are on Thursday, likely have it at the, uh, the first part of next week. Um, also, as I made mention earlier, and some have already been using it, we will be using the chat feature to uh, take questions and be able to maybe answer questions within the chat feature uh, throughout the presentation as we're available, but also at the end, we'll address any additional questions that you may have. Um, don't worry, either way, all questions and answers will be summarized and also available on our website as the, uh, the presentation gets posted. So there'll be a summary there of all the questions and answers. All right, I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and cruise along. So by way of quick introduction, myself, I'm Bobby Young, Director of Client Services here at HDL, and I'm joined by fellow principal Brett Plumley. We both work on the team, meeting with clients each quarter to review and analyze sales tax data, the sales tax which uh, your local communities receive. Also a little bit, oops, here we go, moving right along, about HDL. As you see on the screen, we've been serving communities for well over 37 years now. We currently represent over 500 agencies uh, throughout the state, most in, you know, specifically here in California, over 500 agencies that include cities, counties, and special districts. And uh, most notably, we are blessed to maintain a 99% client retention rate. So let's jump right in. Fourth quarter results. Um, again, anybody that's just recently joined us, we got through the admin piece here. Uh, here we're jumping in with the results here for the fourth quarter, 2021, most notably the October, November, December time period, fourth quarter calendar year. It is the holiday sales period. And as you see, bottom line, no, uh, no delay in the, uh, in the response here, positive fifth plus 15% growth, over 15% growth here for fourth quarter 2021. Uh, by all accounts, a phenomenal quarter for the economy and the individual results. Oops. Um, as you see, as we start to break down and look at some of the subsections of the economy and where that 15% plus growth came from, Right at the very top, we've been talking a lot about this the last few quarters, autos and transportation, another 15% gain during that holiday period that really caught us by surprise. If anybody remem remembers the forecast just last quarter, uh, we weren't quite this optimistic. There were, uh, at that time, some headwinds that we were considering, but lo and behold, the economy really showed out, uh, especially on autos there. We'll have a lot to talk about with you individual clients this quarter, especially those that are heavy on autos. What does it mean for coming up? We're going to hear from Brett talk about our uh, our you know upcoming forecast and what that all holds. As you scroll down the list a little bit, you'll see fuel and service stations plus 55%. Not completely unexpected for us uh, as we all started to see gas prices rise during the period, um, especially as consumption regained and uh, it definitely has shifted. We'll talk more about that coming up here in the first quarter with uh, conflicts over in uh, Russia and Ukraine, uh, really driving prices. But here for the fourth quarter, gas stations were a huge part. Then you look, the next two lines will focus a lot on general consumer goods and extremely solid 18% uh, recovery or rebound uh, for brick and mortar locations and then restaurants. This too kind of caught us by surprise. We had seen a very strong summer, both 2Q and 3Q from restaurants. Here we go, lo and behold, in the fourth quarter restaurants with another 47% increase statewide. Really, uh, really great show all the way around. As you can imagine though, it came at the expense of somewhere and most notably there at the bottom line with the pools. Uh, taking a little bit of a, a step backwards, 
couple of things to keep in mind, especially um, I'll say it up front and we'll talk about it a lot at the back end, but we did have a uh, the continuation of a large retailer changing their allocations. We've spoken about this for the, the last three quarters. Now here, this is the fourth quarter for that. Plus, it has a lot to do also do with that 18% gain at a general consumer goods that you see, uh, given that uh, the return of brick and mortar stores and that activity locally going to steal a little bit from the pools wasn't again completely unexpected for us, but um, here it is as far as actual results. Then what you might hear when we come out and meet with you really across the state didn't really matter the region. Uh, Southern California strong 17% growth, Bay Area nice 13% increase over fourth quarter a year ago. Even as you go down into uh, the far north and Sierras that for the most part have remained fairly stable uh, through this uh, um, and uh, well they remain stable through the pandemic. So the growth hasn't or the rebound hasn't been quite as strong as what we've seen in some of the other more major metropolitan areas, but still positive all the way around the state. Forecast consideration, a lot to digest here and, and uh, most notably when we met to talk about the, the fourth quarter results and really put it into our um, our minds and digest it all. Uh, our conversations were much, very much in depth and touching on all of these Russia and Ukraine crisis right at the forefront, driving gas prices. And what is it going to do inevitably to consumers' availability to spend in the upcoming periods? Supply chain uh, disruptions, delays. Uh, what has it meant overall for? Uh, prices of goods and what may that hold. Interest rates right there as well. As we talk and think about inflation, you see inflation and prices in the middle of the second row um, right here, all kind of rolled in there. And I'm going to talk about that in the next couple of slides. But, uh, you know, as we think about some of that and, and those potential headwinds, um, most, you know, for a lot of us, I think our instincts are to go a little bit more conservative. But hey, let's make, let's take some other. Uh, considerations intact, like most recent performance, as we talked about, you know, very strong summer and now a very strong fourth quarter winter results. Also, labor conditions, even though the labor market is tightening, uh, overall wages are going up and things uh, we should be really kind of thinking about that with uh, with regards to the likelihood of a positive um, effect on uh, sales tax. So here, Taking a very, very complex, and I'm sure we'll 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 get the questions in the chat feature, but um, you know, all of those considerations which are ginormous and very complicated, uh, very detailed in how they may affect the economy. This is but maybe an oversimplification uh, when we then roll back to say, okay, what's our forecast and our bigger picture look like? Um, Current conditions, and you can kind of see the cogs in the wheel or the, uh, I'm sorry, how the wheels are connected here. But as we considered strong demand for consumer goods, having upward pressure on pricing, assuming overall consumption stays the same, we end up with upward pressure on spending and sales tax dollars. It's more of a positive, has could have an eventual positive effect on sales tax, even supply chain and labor shortages which may have downward pressure on supply and availability, but then the, the kind of the impact there ends up having upward pressure on prices and then likely the same impact, upward pressure on spending and sales tax dollars generated. So like I had said earlier, this is an, uh, a bit of an oversimplification, but as we think about sales tax, even with inflation, even with higher interest rates on the rise, higher gas prices, we're still likely to see, you know, somewhat of growth out of sales tax. And it has a lot to do with the fact that most of our spending in California is demand spending, the day-to-day -day, uh, items that we need to live versus discretionary. And when we talk about discretionary income, especially nowadays, how heavily uh, invested a lot of consumers are into the stock market is hey what's the stock market been doing took its bumps 
throughout January and February, return back up. I think I looked at it as around, the Dow was around 34,000 this morning. And um, that is still relatively in proximity to the 35, 36,000 all time high that we experienced back during the fourth quarter, the results that we'll be talking about today. So a lot to consider. We've definitely taken into consideration uh, with, uh, with our forecast. So the results overall statewide, you see right here, middle of the screen, just for perspective and historical comparisons, right? This has really been helping us as we look back on 1Q and 2Q20, the depths of the pandemic, very short lived with regards to negative impacts there. And then the dramatic rebound that we've seen throughout the entire calendar year 2021, um, especially 2Q. Uh, most notably, but that has only continued. And then you get a chance to glimpse at what our outlook looks like for the remainder of the fiscal year. For most agencies, the 3Q to 2Q period will uh, will define your fiscal year 21-22. And you can see first quarter still expecting about 11% jump uh, statewide. It has a lot to do with, you go back to last year, first quarter we saw 11% um, and so the most recent performance really does lean in for us what the uh, what first quarter results will look like. 2Q, and then even as you glance here for fiscal year 22, 23, thinking that growth will start to taper off. This is where some of those headwinds and some of the overall uh, depth and how much more can people spend in terms of dollar amounts may take hold and we may start to see a flattening or a deceleration of growth. Not a decline overall, just a deceleration of growth. So we're softening up starting in 22-23. I think this is also what we were looking at last quarter for the forecast given that uh, we've, wa we've wanted to make sure that we're not overly optimistic but I think given most recent performance, there's not yet a need to be uh, more pessimistic to, uh, to think about a pullback. Here going uh, in, in a little bit more down to the nitty gritty and, and talking about local place of sale, think all kind of brick and mortar locals versus our pool impacts. And most notably pools, as we've talked about for Quite a period of time now, uh, online shopping, especially by consumers. So what you see is local place of sale, the POS line here, uh, really damaged by the pandemic into the negative category, had seen very strong rebounds, especially from those dramatic negatives. But here in 4Q20, solid 20% plus on uh, for local place of sale. And then as you glance up, you see well, overall statewide was much less, and that's the net effect uh, the, uh, for the pools, right? We had seen dramatic pool growth that helped sustain us back during the end of calendar year 20 um, to offset the negatives. And then as we look outward, we do anticipate a local place of sale to remain strong and steady. A um, little bit of return to normal historical growth, which I mentioned, I think, a lot last quarter during the presentation, and no doubt uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue on that track. So that's the big picture uh, right up front. Uh, we're going to jump in. I'm going to turn it over to Brett to, uh, to talk here specifically about some of the major industry groups going forward. Brett. Thank you, Bobby. And the story will be consistent with what Bobby has um, given you as an overview as we begin to go through the seven major industry groups and the pools, starting here with autos and transportation. This sector, as Bobby mentioned, grew significantly in the fourth quarter of 21. The local tax receipts increased 15.3%, and that largely outperformed expectations. We have a few graphs that we've included this time today to show the dynamics that are playing out in the auto sector. In terms of this particular chart, the total vehicle sales, you can see a big drop that took place in the volumes of vehicles early during the pandemic. They recovered very quickly. And then as stores and businesses reopened, supply chains increased and that included a shortage of chips 
that we've been talking about, we talked about during the pandemic and have been talking about three or four quarters now, the chips needed to manufacture the vehicles and the dealers just couldn't possibly keep up with the demand. Then a big part of the story, we talked about this last quarter and again in the fourth quarter of 21, we're talking about today, the prices. Prices definitely are playing a major factor in the overall increase in this sector. As supply became an issue and dealers were running low on inventory, the prices began to explode. We've talked about average price of new and used motor vehicles have been at the peak levels, highest level in the history and continue to grow every single quarter. Prior to the pandemic, the prices were very stable. They now appear to have started to plateau but are expected to remain elevated for quite some time. The industry experts are anticipating that supply will not meet demand until late 2023, early 2024, and that's going to keep the prices elevated. So consistent, as I mentioned, with what Bobby gave as an overview, upward pressure on pricing, the inflationary factor playing a part in almost every major industry group that we're going to talk about today. Here's a, a chart talking about the inventory and sales ratio, and typically it indicates that dealers have almost no inventory on hand. That also began falling in 2021, and this suggests that dealers are selling vehicles very quickly. Another upward pressure on overall prices, and the story here, inventory is low, and that was the story last quarter as well. Here, as we start to drill into the fourth quarter 21 results, what we can see is the biggest portion by far in terms of this sector in autos and transportation, 64% is generated by the new motor vehicle dealers. And once again, that business type in, within this sector doing really well, up 16% for the quarter. So in spite of the lower volume units, increased prices are keeping the dollars at the peak levels, and that is a big part of the story. And then overall, as Bobby gave the overview, overview in the top part of this, we had projected actually 5% and the results came in much better again in this quarter, 15.3%. The long-term forecast keeps the growth about 24 to 28% above the pre-pandemic level. So we're going back talking about fiscal year 18, 19 as pre-pandemic, and we're 24, 28% above that, pretty incredible. And it's, again, the main factor pushing the sales tax upward is the ongoing increase in the prices of the vehicle and combining that, as Bobby talked about, with strong demand, not only in autos and transportation, but almost every sector. Now, moving on to building and construction, this industry group has done really well, stabilized very early on during the pandemic, continued to have a very solid quarter in the fourth quarter of 21. The actual results, 5% growth combined compared to the 8% projection. The lumber prices rose to three times the pre-pandemic prices, and that's definitely had a big impact on the sales tax generated because of that business type in building and materials within building and construction. The permit values in this quarter rose a modest 2% in the final months of 2021. The rising mortgage interest rates that we're seeing now start to grow as the Fed is ratcheting up the increase of federal increase interest rates. That's not yet dampened in the fourth quarter and even on into the the first quarter that we're living in right now, not yet dampening the demand for new homes. The plumbing and electrical materials, which is a business type in this sector, will increase by 15% in the first quarter of 22, and that's on the heels of three straight quarters of double-digit price jumps. The forecast is keeping the same as last forecast, so the same prior estimates, and we're anticipating that material prices will decline and that's going to offset any gains in the construction activity. As a result, we're projecting flat forecast, as you can see, starting in second quarter of 22 all the way through the first quarter of 23, and then modest increases ranging from 2% to 
all the way out to 26, 27 fiscal year. Food and drugs here, this as a reminder is the smallest sector of the seven major industry groups in the pools. It's the, it moves the needle the least statewide. It does have a significant impact on those cities that have especially a significant percentage of their sales tax generated by cannabis related businesses. So the three different business types primarily that are in this category, grocery stores and drug stores and cannabis related activity, grocery store prices and e-commerce sales are up. And so several quarters in a row now, including fourth quarter that we're talking about today, that has contributed to a flattening out of the sales tax that's generated. The drug stores that were hit hard in the calendar year 2020, they have recovered in the later months of calendar year 2021. And then I mentioned the cannabis related activity, very strong during all four quarters of the pandemic in 2020. They've now plateaued. We saw that happening last quarter, and that is flattening out the sales tax that's generated by these types of businesses. So you're seeing that in when we meet with you this quarter, for those of you that do have a significant percentage of the cannabis type businesses, definitely starting to flatten out. And that's flattening out the overall growth in the sector. Long term, we're continuing to project stability with annual forecast 2% all the way out to 26, 27. And now the one that, one of the ones that Bobby mentioned, uh, the kind of the key movers in the quarter, and um, especially right now that's taking place with the Russian Ukraine crisis. This one, we, we put this up here to talk about retail gasoline and comparing the crude oil prices to the prices at the pump. And there definitely is a direct correlation the crude oil is expected to reach levels that haven't been seen since fiscal year 2013, 2014. And it literally fluctuates not only weekly, but daily, but by Bobby and I talk about this often by the hour. And so I even had to update just this particular slide. As Bobby talked about, we are updating these slides all the way up until game time. And I have um, in this slide 114 per barrel, which it was, only about an hour ago and then right before we started it was at 113 so it's it really moves a lot and it really has significantly been moving the needle in terms of the prices at the pump and that is causing again another upward pressure on the sales tax generated so here's the overall sector fuel and service stations and bobby talked about we we expected strong growth in this quarter, 50%. The actual was even a little bit better than that at 55%. And now because of the crisis that's taking place and the upward pressure, strong demand and causing a spike in the short term in the sales tax collection caused by an increase in consumption and demand for fuel, we're ratcheting it up even more over the next couple of quarters. Uh, the industry completely recovered in the later part of 2021 and early into 2022. Consumers have been paying, as you know, all of us know, record prices at the pump, increasing almost daily. And that is for regular and diesel gas. And when you combine that with higher jet fuel costs that are linked to a surge in air travel, that, and especially in the quarter that we're talking about, it started last quarter and has continued on into the fourth quarter of 21 and upward pressure on sales tax. The crisis has restricted the global supplies of fuel and that has pushed the WTI crude oil barrel prices up significantly. That started in early March. So when you combine all of these factors, the estimated revenue boost over the next three quarters is very solid and then bobby talked about this slowdown and we've been talking about it we talked about it last quarter i call fiscal year 21 22 the rebound fiscal year and post 21 22 we're definitely starting to talk about a slowdown in the growth as bobby described it not a recession but a slowdown in the growth so in this sector we are projecting a slowdown starting in the fourth quarter of 22 and all the way through the end of fiscal year 22-23. And when we talk about those macro factors that Bobby talked about up front, 
it is impacting not only the fuel and service stations, but most of the other sectors. So we see the increasing fuel prices, and that will mean higher prices in other areas, such as delivery of online and other products, the cost of food. So that's going to impact the grocery stores. It's going to impact restaurants and hotels. And that the cost of food is being passed along from the farmers. And in terms of the fuel, the increase in the cost of the fuel is impacting products that are made out of plastic, also airline fees. So we definitely are seeing right now it's overall positive inflationary factor because of the demand, as Bobby talked about. But we do, we are aware and we have built that into the forecast, the slowing down of growth and a big contributor right now is the increase in fuel. Long term forecast is consistent with most of the other major industry groups, as Bobby talks about the traditional normal annualized cost in this sector. We're projecting 2% growth all the way out to fiscal year 26, 27. And then we talked about this quarter results in restaurants and hotels. We've had three quarters before fourth quarter of 21, very solid. And once again, you can see 47 percent growth in the quarter. We had projected 40 percent. So we had a big forecast out there and it did even better than anticipated. And that's continuing to help many of your cities and agencies grow in this fiscal year and this in the second quarter of your fiscal year. The pandemic created stored up demand for food service and leisure experiences and Omicron did not deter the restaurant customers whatsoever. For the past two quarters, the sales for on-site sit-down dining establishments have now surpassed the fourth quarter of 2019, and they are projected to outpace the quick service fast food restaurants as the consumers continue, at least in this quarter and in the quarter we're living in, they're focusing in on the experience of eating out and they're happy that they can do it once again. And comparable to the story we're seeing with inflationary pressure that I just talked about, the rising menu prices in this sector, it's going to mean right now further gains in the sales tax that's associated, but the growth in this major industry group could be curbed if the consumers start to react negatively to the volatile fuel prices. So once again, fuel is generating a kind of a ongoing impact on all the other sectors as well, but overall definitely a positive environment in almost every sector this quarter. And I'm gonna hand it back over to Bobby now to talk about general consumer goods. Great, thank you, Brett. And that was a uh, definitely a great reminder for all of us of you know how interconnected all of these pieces are when you think about just the increase cost of fuel and how that then trickles through. It's definitely not all lost on us, uh, when we consider a forecast and, and you know, expected results. Also, uh, you know, those phenomenal results out of uh, restaurants, I know last quarter and many of the conversations I was having, I kind of deemed restaurants and hotels the golden child of this, uh, of this rebound because it just, uh, it, it set itself in during the summer and then only continued. Uh, especially for a category that was expected to take about three to five years to rebound uh, for uh, for where they were pre-pandemic, um, which you, uh, you kind of see over here, they've uh, they've met that and are now exceeding it. And so, yeah, pretty uh, pretty fascinating and wonderful to see for our overall economy, and then for your local uh, sales tax. So, shifting gears to general consumer goods, holiday sales. Here they were. Um, as you look at this line chart, you'll see fourth quarter 2020 is the green line. And we don't go too far to uh, to look at the largest category within the general consumer goods sector, and that's discount department stores. Here, think Costco, Walmart, Target, uh, Sam's Club, and the like, that definitely had an exceptional uh, holiday period. Plus, there's the added, right? We started to see gas prices go up, and those uh, major retailers that do also sell gas, they report it here under general consumer goods. They don't separate out the two. So that, too, helps really boost up 
uh, the numbers and what it looks like, even when you compare back to fourth quarter 2019 there in the blue. Um, the subsectors that you know don't have maybe that uh, that fuel component to uh, to possibly skew uh, the results, family apparel, TJ Maxx, Ross Marshalls, uh, DDs, the like, they have been doing exceptional all the way through the pandemic as folks steer their attention away a little bit from down the list department stores and uh, maybe into a lower cost option to uh, to still get their needs. But family apparel had a very nice fourth quarter, also specialty stores. And then as I, I didn't necessarily glance over it, but you can see here the traditional department stores, Nordst Nordstrom's, Macy's, uh, Bloomingdale's, and others um, not yet back to where they were pre-pandemic, that fourth quarter 2019 uh, point there, but a very nice rebound from where uh, they were just one year ago, fourth quarter. So uh, great, great show for, I think, on department stores when many of us had been questioning, hey, are malls dead? Are people gonna go back to in-store shopping now that they've had the online experience? And I think the results that we see here at a holiday sales do kind of solidify that, no, consumers like to be in-person, they like the in-store experience, and it's not gonna go away uh, to you know eventually lose out completely to, uh, to online, as we see right here in our most recent graph. It's, uh, it just needs to, major retailers and major mall locations especially, just need to continue to reinvent themselves and the experience, uh, leading in obviously to restaurants within those, but you know, a very nice diverse um, presentation of uh, merchants that they're, they're providing to potential customers. So uh, yes, here uh, is a chart that we've been tracking for an extended period of time, you can see us on here all the way back to 2000, we've been watching this dynamic of brick and mortar versus online. As uh, as clients, you'll be receiving this graph. It's a statewide look. It, uh, we don't have the ability to really dissect down to the local level because of all the dynamics that happen with the online component. Think county pools and uh, how that gets allocated. But Keeping it more bigger picture statewide, we saw this dramatic drop in 2020 because of the pandemic and thereby the exceptional growth, continued growth out of online. Now we see um, the return of brick and mortar and the in-store experience and what it looks like compared to any time prior before or well in excess. And so it's a good mark there for brick and mortar. The online jumps, we leave in little reminders here, AB 155, the initial uh, regulations on out-of-state um, uh, sellers. AB 147, most recently, uh, online, out-of-state, marketplace facilitator, all those components going in, definitely had the major jump up in the tax rate growth. Yes, here in calendar year 21, probably as we go outward, we'll expect even this trend to eventually start to level off or become uh, kind of more normalized with people able to buy online, but then also for especially volume shopping needing to go in store. And so the green line here is also expected to level off uh, as we go forward. So what does it look like on the numbers? And you can see uh, as we go here, let me see, did I put in? Oh, I did not, sorry. Uh, fourth quarter 2021, 18% growth out of general consumer goods overall. You can see the great results throughout calendar year 21. And what does that mean when you look at this current result compared to fourth quarter 2019? Just different ways to look at it, right? Visually, definitely a higher peak. Most you'll probably hear as we come out with results this quarter, if you are heavy on general consumer goods, we wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of uh, a lot of your categories or for a lot of you, the general consumer goods category in excess of where we were fourth quarter 2019. And then um, as Brett spoke about and I made mention before, as we turn our attention to fiscal year 22, 23, and even, even looking forward, it is a category that we do anticipate will level off fairly quickly, uh, a little bit more than, than others. So we'll be watching very closely, but enjoying the benefits 
as uh, as we experience fourth quarter right now. Then um, as we talk about the next couple of categories, both business and industry and the pools, we know that they have been both impacted by the same uh, change in shift in the local tax, uh, which was previously coming by way of the pools now coming by way of local tax distributions uh, from a, a major uh, retailer. So uh, that's uh, along with AB 147, and that's kind of the where the two paths crossed, AB 147, new online collections from out-of-state retailers uh, that had this dramatic jump, uh, but then the local shift really uh, poses the 21% gain out of BNI. So spending a little bit of time talking about fulfillment centers because that's where this biggest shift had occurred back in the first quarter of 21. So the jump here uh, from fourth quarter 20 uh, to this 162% growth in 1Q21 had a lot to do uh, with the change in reporting by a large retailer that continued throughout the calendar year. And so now when we turn the page to, to, uh, to calendar year 22, when we look back, so not when we meet with you this quarter, but going past this, we'll expect to see a little bit more normalized activity or level of activity uh, comparing to the prior year because we're no longer talking about the reporting change. Thank goodness, I think we beat on it a lot. Uh, so now we get past that, but most evident uh, here, you could see fourth quarter 2021 with an 80% growth over last year from the fulfillment center side. And to put things into perspective, because business and industry is such a diverse category overall, you can see how much uh, fulfillment center specifically move the needle here on the category. But medical biotech, which as a result of the pandemic have been doing great, starting to taper off. And I think we would all take a nice uh, sigh of relief knowing that numbers have changed statewide. Uh, a lot less mask mandates, the fear of the pandemic definitely decreasing now and even at the fourth quarter. And so some of this medical and biotech money starting to uh, starting to dissipate compared to the high point uh, of a year ago. And then other categories, small growth uh, just kind of depends on uh, especially timing and seasonality effect when we think about uh, garden agriculturals and uh, warehouse farm construction equipment. Sometimes they rise and fall. Uh, depending on the time of year. So B&I, um, while it experienced this transition for the change on reporting, going out further, overall on a statewide bas basis, just returning to normal historical growth of about 3% has a lot to do, that 3% outlook has a lot to do with the cost of goods getting more expensive. But remember, business and industry is a lot of business to business transactions, a little less impacted, by consumers' uh, sediment, you know, uh, sediment with regards to purchasing. So if demand is there for consumers, then the business-to-business -business transactions will likely continue uh, at a steady pace with the cost helping benefit sales tax at the end. Then pool performance as the offset, when we talked about you know, that lead up to fourth quarter 2020, um, really that show of AB 147 having its impact here, uh, then the change of allocations really pulling it down. And we did see the pools drop 2% this quarter. Uh, while some aspects of the pool uh, were up and some, uh, especially during the holiday season, we saw some online retailers where we have good comparison data to, to a year ago, they were up but other functions and other pieces were down just a little bit. And as we then, uh, whoops, one more. Um, how are the pools made up? You can see the general consumer goods and that online shopping does contribute a heavy mark here with that reporting change. This is that flannel quarter that we got to talk about it. But BNI and those business to business transactions that do funnel money back through the pools, uh, they do make up a considerable amount of the overall pool category. And you can see there, fourth quarter 20, the green bar up a little bit higher than a year ago. So then jumping to the one I was expecting to see on the pools, um, had seen strong double digit gains taper off as we go forward, should normalize. So cost of goods 
inflation, as we've talked a lot about, will inevitably, we are anticipating that to have a continued positive effect on the overall growth of the pools. So statewide, how does it all come into uh, come into play? And this is uh, certain aspects of of this were, you know, just as I think we got some of the uh, questions in the chat, uh, just with the governor's announcement yesterday on a new package to help drivers and, and um, uh, residents of California with higher gas prices. It has a lot to do with the results that we're seeing here and much of what we heard out of the state and their results overall that, uh, you know, we really hadn't been negatively impacted on a sales tax basis. It cool, you know, you could see here it definitely um, was down 2%, only 2% during the depths of the pandemic, but then a very strong 11% growth with all of this considered in now for fiscal year 21, 22, you can see we're expecting another 12% growth. And that uh, just continues to give us an overall dollar amount that's in excess of any time prior to. So not uh, not completely out of the question that we are, um, we've not just hit our marks from pre-pandemic, but now continuing up above. And as we had talked about, that deceleration of growth really softening up over the next coming two years, 2022, you know, 23, and 23, 24, really around the two and a half to 2% mark to take into account consumers adjusting to higher prices, uh, inflation hopefully starting to taper off uh, at some point, but that balancing act will likely take about two fiscal years uh, from our perspective. It may, for some of you, uh, feel like a slowdown or a recession. You might experience even flat growth at the local level or a decrease depending on your the local makeup of your sales tax base. But overall, this uh, while we experienced only a 2% drop during the pandemic where we shut down the economy. It wasn't nearly as bad as what we experienced during the Great Recession. As we go forward, and if everything holds true, we experience this slowdown. It's going to feel like a recession, but on paper, we are anticipating it still to be slight positive growth overall. Once we go out further, a longer term forecast, uh, we would then just return to normal historical growth somewhere around 3% overall statewide. So final thoughts, 2021 tax receipts grew 11%, year to date is up 17%. So as you're adjusting for mid-year and hopefully for clients that we prepared budgets for last quarter, you've uh, you've already had that look. That it, This is really maybe not a surprise because we were anticipating um, overall, a really strong 21-22 year. 22-23, we are looking at everything, uh, especially the headwinds. We're trying to take them into consideration, but then also understand the dynamic impact that it's going to have back to consumers. As you uh, as you heard me may mention, the gov as a part of the governor's, and I know we have a question there, because part of the governor's plan is also a rebate of $400 per registered vehicle back to consumers. I think then we have to consider, and I'll go into more depth when the, when we address the question, but to consider that's more money into people's pockets and people right now, consumers, most consumers are fairly healthy um, with strong savings, with equity in their homes. Uh, no fear that uh, home prices are gonna completely drop even with higher interest rates. People may stay in their homes, uh, there's just not an incentive to move uh, as much, but that remains, uh, keeps some equity in their pockets and the stock market. As we talked about, yes, it's taken a hit the last couple of months and uh, the crisis in Ukraine is uh, definitely playing its impact, having its impact day to day with the fluctuations in the market. But overall, I continue to watch to see as soon as we get back solidly for maybe a week to two week period of time, back up to Dow being 35,000 or even in excess, really then leads us to, okay, um, Wall Street and investors have now taken into account the impacts and it may end up leading us to a solid summer period with the stock market, which then as we come back and we think about discretionary spending uh, at the local level, 
could likely, as we've already built into the forecast, um, stay steady during the summer months, even with higher gas prices expected. So, um, yeah, that's uh, it for the presentation. We've got some uh, questions and answers. I think uh, Brett may have uh, touched on a couple of those. I saw three that were directly related to cars. So I'll go through a couple of those right now. Does, oh, uh, let's see, go back up. There we go. And Brett, did you uh, did you already touch on a few of those? Yeah, uh, so Roland asked a question, does HDL foresee a reduction in sales tax receipts due to the pause? And you're talking about that, um, Bobby, kind of a, a, a macro question, but in terms of um, we had the fuel sector, we're projecting solid growth through third quarter of 22, and then it's due to a combination. It's a pro projected drop in the WTI crude oil barrel prices. The prices at the pump very, as I mentioned, very closely correlated with the oil barrel prices and then a gradual slowdown in the consumption and demand for fuel. There is the governor's proposal for the, the $400 rebate, I think, to potentially continue to stimulate the local economy. But I also think, as you talked about, Bobby, that um, you know, there, those that have the discretionary income will probably be counting on that stock market as we head into the summer months in terms of continuing mm -hmm. spending, hopefully. Yeah. And then uh, the other question on the hotel, the same trend um, is growth within hotels sales tax close to the same trend of restaurants or local eating out really pulling up the increase. Yeah, the the casual dining and which are sit down restaurants and fast casual and the quick service fast food restaurants have definitely recovered more quickly than the other business types that are within that sector and specifically with the hotels that industry itself is recovering but it's definitely lagging behind the overall growth of restaurants so we do have a couple of business types that are within the restaurant and hotel sector leisure and entertainment and um, we have those types of businesses that are also recovering and we had projected toward the end of the calendar year 21 full recovery in those business types as well there's also restaurants with hotels and those are doing better and growing as well within the that overall 47% growth in the sector. Yeah. And you know, on that restaurant hotel front, uh, you know, the the great results we saw overall experienced by the category had a lot as Brett, Brett may mention for indoor dining. We still have yet to see the return of foreign travel. And so Marcus on your question, I think hotels and whether it be restaurants at hotels that generate the sales tax or for you locally it's the tot tax there is still more likely to come uh the return of foreign travel to higher per night stays at hotels is the real thing and inflation is a part of that right um so yeah there's some positive still to come i think overall in the category what we've seen to date is mostly the indoor dining yeah, and then we had the one question, Ricardo, um, during your general consumer goods presentation, Bobby, that how are the online sales comparing to the in-store sales? And you talked about the growth, especially the brick and mortar and general consumer goods, 18% really strong growth again in this quarter, following last quarter and the quarter before, and now the pool dollars beginning to flatten out. So that that gap is going back up right now in terms of brick and mortar retail compared to the, the online sales through the pools. Yeah, I think the uh, the slide that we have, which uh, again, as clients, you'll be seeing um, a lot this quarter. Let me find it and pull it up here. Is this chart here to, yep, we've seen online continue to grow, but um, we've also seen a stronger rebound in from uh, brick and mortar sales. So it's, um, yeah, they're both experiencing really solid, re uh, well, continued growth for online, but the rebound really strong for brick and mortar. Uh, there were a couple of earlier questions on car sales. I'll, uh, I'll touch on these. So uh, Peter asked, do you think there will be a drop in vehicle sales due to fleet purchases? 
uh, are rental companies driving the demand, this demand, uh, having to restore their inventory that they liquidated during COVID? Yeah, uh, I think we would all expect that um, sales in even down below due to current shortages, uh, Shannon had asked, due to current shortages of new cars, um, will, there'll be a shortage over the next two years. So yeah, there's gonna be really, really tight inventory on cars. And I think that's where, when you heard Brett talk about overall our forecast on autos, we're still remaining fairly positive because buyers are going to be, <laughs> the buyers likely are going to be there. We are a car country, California. So no, uh, no real getting around that, that as prices continue to increase fairly dramatically, even if the prices hold true, they're still elevated from where they were a year ago. Lower inventory means tighter demand, could even push those prices up a little bit more, but we're still gonna see sales tax generated. That's a general statement. For your local sales tax, it's gonna be highly dependent on your local dealer. Um, how tight are they with corporate to be able to get the inventory needed to sell? Uh, or are they getting kind of beat up and not able to maintain or withhold good inventory uh, to where their sales tax is going to go down because they're just not making the same volume sales. We think it's going to happen statewide, but at the local level, we've seen it very dependent on how uh, a dealership is with getting inventory. So it's a consideration most certainly. And then uh, Sharon had asked, how does electric vehicle purchases play into the overall auto uh, perspective? We had a great discussion as you can imagine about uh, not just, you know, looking at very specific merchants, like let's say Tesla uh, or even other major car manufacturers, there are a slew of new entrants into the market now with new electronic vehicles that are starting to pop up, really show themselves the inflated gas prices during the summer is most certainly gonna have some people uh, shifting around. And so we take, uh, when we look at the forecast for autos, we, uh, let me go ahead and uh, scroll back for the visual uh, really quickly for everybody. When we look at it, you can see here our forecast going forward this summer, if people do start transitioning over to available, if available electronic vehicles, it's gonna mean new money to the market, right? And they're gonna sell their vehicle um, and as they sell it to a, a local dealer, they're going to likely resell it because, again, overall demand is going to be tight um, for availability. So we are anticipating the auto market right now to uh, to remain fairly fairly steady because of all these different components. Right. Um, let's see. Presentation will be made available online. Um, so, yeah, we talked a little bit about the um, the governor's proposal to suspend the CPI adjustment, uh, the likely impact on sales tax just from that suspension. We are we're going to continue to see sales tax grow because we're expecting higher gas prices. Everybody, it's it won't be a surprise if I uh, if I say or if we uh, we put out there with broadcast that we're expecting five dollars a gallon pretty much statewide average through the summer months all the way likely through uh, Labor Day. So get ready for it. Um, but is it going to be $6 where it is now? Not likely. And that's when crude oil drops below 100 uh, across our fingers, probably sometime next, uh, where are we now? We're, eh, sometime maybe late April, early May, we'll expect to see crude oil come, uh, come back down. Um, we'll still expect higher gas prices, which will mean greater sales tax growth. I think now with the governor's proposal, there will be others, especially the League, California cities, Michael Coleman especially, uh, look out for him to broadcast what this will mean to you at the local level, especially for your Huda money. Um, we uh, we leave it to uh, more to Michael Coleman to, uh, to put together that forecast and impact. So be ready for new information available there. Also, let's see online. How do returns online, how do the returns of online purchases get reflected uh, from Kyle? Uh, most notably, well, for most online purchases uh, get, you know, especially from out-of-state online retailers, we'll be looking for those all in the pool. Um, but with the consolidation or 
with some of the changes local uh, reporting to the local agencies now um, it's now reflected both b and i and the pools uh, when we look through the details going through uh lincoln asked is there a five-year forecast by region on your site or statewide um no five-year forecast we uh we do a longer term forecast for the state but then once we get down into the region we rely on the forecast we provide our clients individually where um we we choose not to even look at it at a, at a like a countywide or region basis because there's so many in particulars that we then just take it right down to the local level and hopefully that's a a great benefit and a service that we provide to our clients directly is to um, not leave up to question that you've got to use or use a regional forecast for your results is nope we're uh, we're putting trying to put the nail right on the head for you at the local level and what your outlook is so yeah uh the outlook for the housing market how does it impact sales tax and consumer spending uh this from susan it looks like um brett talked about it before i believe that uh you know the housing market should remain strong even with increased interest rates it likely just means people won't be moving as much uh there won't be a great uh, great demand we had seen that impact back on the back with the pandemic, right? Folks staying home, upgrading their properties. We saw a spike in building and construction results during the pandemic. If I scroll back to that really quickly, and give me one second, because it's here. There we are. So back here during, you know, right through the pandemic post pandemic we saw double digit gains from the industry a lot of people taking equity out keeping contractors busy that is still the case right now if anybody is trying to get some work done at their house don't be surprised if you hear a six month waiting time as contractors are very busy for us looking at sales tax that means that sales tax generated is likely to be delayed a little bit which then still gives us hope for one q uh, 2Q is going to be tough because of how strong 2Q was a year ago, but even flat with post pandemic means that the housing market has uh, has helped sustain sales tax one here on building construction growth, uh, but then two is for consumers knowing that they have equity in their homes gives confidence to still work through the increased prices on gas and inflation that yep okay. I'm not losing on both sides. Um, the uh, the weight of overall equity should help consumer confidence remain steady. And Ron, uh, gas prices will peak at seven per gallon prior to the summer months. Do you know if it'll decrease much during the summer? Um, it uh, should cross our fingers, $7 a gallon. And Ron, I know you're there here in the LA Ventura area. Uh, kind of getting uh, uh, taken a little bit at seven dollars a gallon. Uh, same up in the Bay Area, right? It's uh, it's very sensitive. Should peel off of that, but I would expect at least five dollars a gallon through the summer. It'll uh, it'll come down, but we were you know in the fours last year, so probably not going to see fours until uh, till the fall slash winter months on gas prices. All right, just over the twelve o'clock hour. Um, Thank you very, very much for joining us today. If you have any other questions and answers, uh, Brett and myself, our contact information is here on the screen. Also, feel free to reach out to uh, as clients to your local to your specific consultant uh, who might be meeting with you this quarter. If you want to go through more details for all of our clients, we'll be updating our forecasts again, especially as you make those last considerations for your upcoming uh, proposal, uh, proposed budget, and uh, hopeful, uh, you know, cross our fingers, adoption uh, come June. But uh, be looking for that as we schedule all the meetings and look forward to seeing you in the coming months. Thank you so much. Thank you.